there's a bit of an elephant in the room uh, with your coach right beside you there. I know he's been asked about it and the whole thing. I didn't want to put you in uncomfortable situations during the season, but now after the season's over and the whole thing, uh, what about from the player perspective, Pat? And then we got to get Landon to comment about uh, the, the future of rising star coach Landon Powell. Um, when you say the... I'll, I'll let him... No, no, so I want to hear what you say. Well, well, I don't really know what... What, what are you asking me? Great question. Thank you for uh, making me be very pointed on this. Uh, Clemson has an open job. Landon Powell is a rising star in college baseball and has an amazing history in the state of South Carolina. Uh, there are other jobs anticipated to be open as well. North Greenville has not been known as a baseball powerhouse. So yeah. from the outside so, looking in, it looks like uh, that this office – might not be the end place for for the guy that's to your right right now. You with me? Right. No. And trust me, I, I'm now fully following, and I've been one of the players to kind of be all over him about it. You know, like I see the tweets, and you know, if I was him, like why wouldn't you go? You know. <laughs> but me and him have talked a lot, and he's been very transparent about unless the, the head coaching job at the University of South Carolina opens up, he's not going anywhere, and he is Tigerville for life till then. Can and you, that's my, that's can my you, final that's statement. News. We get a, a confirmation on that sitting in the big seat. I mean, you're literally sitting in the big seat there. You're taking the time out on that one? Tigerville for life. What? Oh, Tigerville for life. All right, throwing Me that up. Me package deal. John Mike. John Mike's over there, package deal, Bryce Roddy. I got these young smell you, Campbell. I can't leave these guys. I got, I got young studs. So, well, can you, can you explain that a little more to me? The older I get, Landon, the more I appreciate fit for jobs. This seems like an excellent fit for you in a lot of ways, as opposed to chasing the next rung on the ladder. No, I mean, you know, I, my wife and I did a lot of reflecting the last couple of days, and we actually um, yesterday was her birthday, and we went to went to church together and hung around the house and just did nothing. It was an awesome day. I went to dinner last night and we talked a lot about this stuff because, you know, the phone has been blowing up and people make, you know, people are speculating and, you know, I'm a person that is always open-minded and I hear everyone out on things. I'm not a person that just says no, you know, um, you know, the Clemson thing, I don't think that's a reality. I mean, they, they have a list. I'm not really on it. It doesn't look like, which is okay. I mean, I, I'm fine. You know, I've thought a lot about like, you know, I'm a Gamecock and I, I, I'm i in the South Carolina Hall of Fame and I, I believe I bled Garnet, you know, like. Could I go wear orange and purple? I just don't think that that's the reality, you know, like I I think that there's a couple things. And I'm just being really honest here, Tim. So, you know, I think that there's a ton of Clemson fans that would hate me the day I walked on campus. You know, they, they just they already wouldn't like me because of my career at South Carolina and not only my career South Carolina, but like our team's had a lot of success against Clemson, you know? And so there's like a lot of Clemson fans that just aren't going to forget that. And, and I understand, like, I'm never going to like Deshaun Watson. You know, he's a awesome dude. Well, I know there's a lot going on now. I met him in college, thought he was an awesome guy, classy, hard worker. I'd heard great things about him, but you know, he, he used to kill our Gamecocks. So I just can't like him, you know? Um, and I think Clemson fans feel that way about me in some ways. So I don't think that I'm a real a reality for that job. Um, and also, I got a bunch of teammates and family and friends that are Gamecocks also. And just thinking of going to that school, going to Clemson, like what I'd be doing to all of my buddies and friends at South Carolina. Like, I just don't think I could do that. So, you know, um, I love Tigerville. You know, this, this town of Greenville, my wife grew up here, born and raised. Her family lives here. You know, um, our nieces and nephews are here in town. Um, this has become a home for us. Um, like going to church yesterday, sitting in church, like, you know, we did my daughter's funeral in that church. You know, the guy that was leading worship is a, a really close friend of mine. And, um, you know, our Bible study group was all there around us. And, and it's like, man, why would I want to, you know, why am I like in a hurry to get out of this? This is a, like, this is a great season of life right now. And so, um, you know, I, I'm not uh, I'm not chasing any other jobs. I'm happy where my feet are. Um, but, you know, I've told these recruits and I've told these guys in my office, there's four players in my office right now listening to me talk. I've told them from day one, like a job that I that I would take would be the University of South Carolina. Um, that's there's no secret about that. You know, that's my alma mater. 
you know, I, I was shaped into the person I am at that university. Um, I love that fan base. Um, that, that is a place that I would go, but, um, I'm not in a hurry to do it. I'm not, you know, they got a coach there now. He's, I, I believe in him. I have his back and I mean that, like, I know there's a lot of people that don't have his back and that are questioning what's going on there right now. I'm not one of those people. I want them to be better. Am I, as a Gamecock, satisfied with what they're doing there? No, it's not. Right now, it's not good enough. But he knows that too. I promise you, and and he wants to get it better. I know he does, and I and I have his back. I believe in him. I think he's the guy that can get, get turn it around and get him on track. So, you know, I, I, by no means I, I'm a Mark Kingston fan. I'm rooting for him. I hope he gets it done. Um, but you know, maybe five years from now, ten years from now, who knows what the future holds? Maybe that job is available, and you know, maybe maybe I get a phone call or maybe I don't. I don't know, but I can't control that. So. Um, these players right here, I'm invested in them. They've invested in me. And, you know, I got guys in this office. There's four guys in here right now that all have eligibility to be here again next year. So we're going to go win another one. You know, that's that's the game plan. It is my duty to ask uh, to confirm that was neither Clemson nor Ray Tanner or Mark Kingston calling your phone while you're in the middle of that, right? That was actually a Clemson fan, but no, he, he's not a uh, he's not one of them. Okay, so no, that was actually it was actually my brother in law calling me right there. He's a diehard Clemson fan. Um, I'll call him back. Nice work. Uh, so my only response to that, and I really appreciate you being um, uh, upfront and uh, and as forthcoming on this uncomfortable situation as possible. But my only follow up question would be kind of what you touched on when you're talking about how players sometimes at a Division two. Uh, university can feel like they're not getting maybe the deserved attention they're getting do you ever feel that way as a coach i think from the outside looking in uh fans would probably say well of course you would move up to a division one job if it were to open kind of thing yeah i mean um so the thing about me like moving up division one like i i don't i don't know if people realize like why i do what i do i, I don't coach college baseball to climb the ladder and get the next best job. That's, I'm not, that's not my motivation. You know, um, I think there's a lot of coaches out there that are chasing the bigger job. They're chasing the pay raise that, you know, they want to be on the big stage, you know, and, and Tim, like I, I've been fortunate to play this game at the highest level on the biggest stage. And, you know, I, I've gotten my name in the paper. I've, I've made my money. Like that stuff, those boxes are checked for me personally. Like I, those, those things don't fulfill me anymore. So I coach college baseball now because I, I love this game and I love the relationships and I want to pay forward all the things that were done for me in my career. You know, I, I, I had a lot of great coaches that, you know, mentored me, helped me, you know, led me on the path I'm on. And I feel like it's my duty to pay that forward to the next generation. And um, I'm just a lifer. I would rather coach baseball every day than go sell insurance. You know, um, I just – this is what I love to do. I've been fortunate and lucky that um, financially I, I've, I've, I'm in a good spot from my playing career and, and things like that and some investments that I, I don't have to work for the money. So North Greenville is not a job that pays very much. I'm not sitting here raking it in, but that's okay. Like I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm, I got enough to survive. My kids are healthy and happy. Um, so I, I like coaching because I love coaching. I, I don't want to just go chase a bigger job that pays more money. Um, you know, and then, you know, the thing some people say is like, well, don't you want to do it on a bigger stage? Like, a, you know, prove that you can do it at the D one level or in the, in the SEC or one of those places, like the co competitor in me will tell you like, yeah, there's a little bit of that, like that people may discredit what we've done because it's D two, but people that really know that have like been to North Greenville, seen our campus, people that like saw it four years ago. Um, people that know this level of baseball, they know what we've done. Like, I don't have to prove to anybody, like, what we just accomplished. Um, the, I would be willing to tell you, I think what we just accomplished at North Greenville in the last seven or eight years is harder than taking a place like South Carolina to Omaha. They have all – I mean, the, South Carolina has an incredible facility. They have huge budgets. They, coaches have tons – they get tons of pay. They have tons of recognition. We used to joke around the offices all the time, like, you know how easy it is to recruit at some of those SEC schools? Like, you just – you go find a Pat Monteith, and you're like, oh, that guy's a stud. Hey, want to come to South Carolina? And he's like, yeah, and that's it. Like, it's it's that easy. You know, but, like, I had to go to Pat and be like, hey, you want to come to North Greenville University? 
Tigerville, like, hey, it's, you got to go to chapel twice a week, and you got to take Old Testament and New Testament. Hey, you can never drink an alcoholic beverage, and you can't take a dip. And if you get caught kissing a girl, they kick you out of school. And, um, you know, I don't have any scholarship money really to give you, but I promise it's going to be great. Like, you're going to – this is going to be awesome. You know, I'm, that's what I'm having to convince these guys. So think how easy it would be at South Carolina just to be like, hey, you, you want to come? Yeah, okay, let's go. Like, I feel like the recruiting would be so simple. Um, and that's – I'm not – I'm being – I'm joking. I'm not trying to make light of what the coaches at South Carolina deal with. I mean, they, they obviously have to work hard. But, um, yeah, I, I think what we've accomplished at North Greenville is uh, for the people that know, that have, like, been here and seen this and understand, like, I don't need to – I don't need to go to a bigger level to prove what we're capable of. Um, so, that's a long answer to your question, but – you know, I, I'm not chasing anything. I'm not – I don't feel like a hole or an emptiness that I need to go fill it at a different level or, like, accomplish more. Like, I'm really proud of what we just accomplished. I love these guys and these players. And, you know, I just want to go win three or four more now in a row and just keep doing it. Wow. Good stuff, man. Much much appreciated uh, the, the insight there. And it makes a lot of sense. And I think it's where a lot of people strive to be, Landon, right? You, you do your job for the right reasons. And the only reason why you would ever leave that job would be maybe for one or two dream opportunities out there. It seems to be where you are right now. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. I mean, I, I there's a quality of life piece to what I have here. And there's the family that I have here, you know, the, um, you know, we're my family, my life, my personal family, we're in a good season of life right now. So um, I'm not, I'm not jumping or racing to get anything, but, um, like I've told people from the get go, and like I told Coach Tanner when I retired from the big leagues eight years ago, I mean, this is not a secret or something new. Uh, you know, my ultimate goal down the road, long term, yeah, I would love to be back at my alma mater. Like, that's that would be a goal personally that I do have, and these guys know that. Um, but I'm no hurry to make that happen, you know. Um, God has a plan, and when that plan happens, it, it happens. If it doesn't, I'm okay with that too. Um, so I don't want people out there to think that I'm like chasing that or reaching for that, like. Man, I hope Mark Kingston goes and wins three or four national championships in a row. And then he rides off in the set set and he retires at some point, just like Coach Tanner did. Then maybe it's my turn. I don't know. Um, or maybe it's not. Um, but I teach these players the same thing. I have to live it. You know, be happy where your feet are. You know, enjoy what, the moment and what you're doing. And, you know, um, if, if you got one foot out the door all the time, how are you fully committed? You're not. And uh, so I have to practice what I preach. And, I, and I, that's, that's what I've been doing.